Hello and welcome to part 2 of repairing and rebuilding a very large horizontal model steam engine. This section covers the complete disassembly of the engine. Here you see me removing the big end bearing brasses. They're called bearing brasses but they're actually not brass. They're made of gun metal which is much more hard wearing. Brass would be very unsuitable for a big end bearing like this. Off comes the bottom cap, that allows me to remove the connecting rod. Then I'm refitting the cap so I don't lose any of the bolts. Generally these things will only fit one way round. If you turn it the other way round, the hole will not be in the centre. This big end bearing is in very good condition, so I don't need to do much with it, maybe polish it a little. Now it's time to remove the crankshaft. I'm going to have to do quite a lot with this crankshaft, because it's very badly bent. And it's bent at the flywheel end, so the flywheel wobbles about. If you want to have a look at the first video, I open it with the wobbly flywheel. The initial engineering standard on this engine was pretty good. As you can see here, the eccentric sheave is coming off the crankshaft and it's a nice tight fit to it. This is a very solid engine and the bed plate is cast iron, but the main supports for the crankshaft are pieces of machined aluminium that bolt onto the cast iron. But they're only bolted onto the cast iron bed plate with countersunk slot head bolts. This is not a good system really. Here you see me removing one of them to have a look at the thread. And it comes out far too easily. I think when I put this engine back together, I'm going to have to use countersunk bolts, but I think I'll use Allen Head High Tensile countersunk bolts. That way, with a bit of Loctite on the flat mating surfaces, I don't think they're ever going to move. This engine has a governor fitted. It doesn't actually govern anything, but it's quite well made and it looks good. It's only held to the engine with one extended cylinder bolt, so it's quite easy to remove. Just remove the bolt and the whole assembly is in your hand. Yes, it is a very well made item. It just needs a good clean. Here you see me removing the bolts that hold the piston rod gland to the cylinder. When I finish rebuilding this engine, I'm going to use studs with matching nuts on the gland, much more like full size practice. Before removing the cylinder from the bed plate, I'm going to remove the guide bars. They're just held on with a nut above and below the cylinder. Here you see the engine minus the guide bars. The next thing to do is to remove the cylinder itself, but before that I'm going to give the engine a wipe down. I'm using a cloth with some white spirit, which will remove most of the surplus oil and black stuff. Before I get to the final painting stage, I will need to thoroughly degrease this engine. The cylinder is held to the bed plate with four Allen type bolts, and these are easily removed from underneath the bed plate. Time now to have a look in the steam chest. I've removed the bolts, and I'm now taking off the steam chest cover to have a look at the valve. And it looks okay. The port face doesn't look scored, and the valve looks to be in quite good condition. The slide valve was not really an issue with this engine. The main part of the cylinder that needed looking at was the piston, because most of the compressed air was passing the piston. So when I make the piston fit to the cylinder and work without passing air or steam, this engine should be quite efficient as far as the steam engine goes. I'll just remove this rusty pipe, although I will be cleaning up and refitting this pipe, because when doing a restoration job, it's good to use as many of the original parts as possible, at least the visible ones, and I will most definitely be reusing this cylinder lubricator, although I do think I will be replacing the brass banding. What I'm doing here is refitting a couple of the nuts to the steam chest, just to hold it in place so I don't lose it. That's it for the cylinder for the moment. It's ready to be renovated. In the next video of the series, I'll be showing how to prepare the bed plate ready for painting. And also I'll show you what I did to the crankshaft. Thanks for watching, and I hope it's been of some use to you. 